welcome to Mind Your Business, a channel where we are in our everybody business. If you don't mind getting in people's business, you're on the right channel. Talking about current topics and gossip. Well, I do love the reunion and this one definitely was kicking off with, you know, Tisha versus Stormy, you know, you've got Marcel versus Stormy at some points. So you've got Courtney kind of sending little messages over to, to Marcel as well. It was a funny one. Let's talk about it. Well, Grand people, my inclusive crew, let's talk about Love and Marriage Huntsville reunion part one. Now, talking about, let's look at their outfits. Let's start with that, right? So I thought everyone looked really good. Like, everyone was dressed up very nice. I thought that everyone looked really good in terms of um, the ladies. I thought they all looked lovely. Um, Mel, I thought she was nice. She looked nice. I don't... Her outfit isn't necessarily my kind of fave, but I feel like it looks nice still. But I felt like it was a little bit tinsely for me. But I could see she was getting her Beyonce on. So I was like, go for it, Mel. Do what you got to do, honey. Um, Tisha's coming out looking hot too. I feel like everyone looked really nice on on the show. The men, the, the Scott brothers, I just thought, couldn't you guys put on some colour? Just always in the black blasted suits. Or at least Courtney came, you know, matching Stormy. I thought that was really cute. And I liked um, Martel's blazer as well. He, he was matching um, Carlos. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway. Now it starts off with, you know, Carlos digging into whole Marceau and Tisha and how they are running their businesses. And the fact that they came under fire a few times um, throughout the season. You know, of course, Marceau and Tisha acting like, no, there's there's no fire for them to come under. You know, they're all great. Tisha saying that, you know, um, you know, they do good business, essentially. And at their first event of the, you know, the Black Expo, or she says Espo, obviously, she's got a slight um, speech impediment, um, which is fine. Because I've seen people shading her online talking about she should fix her speech impediment. I'm like, let her live, man. Let her live. She's got a little speech impediment. Leave her. Let her be. Anywho, you've got Tisha saying that she didn't feel like everyone was giving her any good feedback at that time. Well, on the panel, as in on the cast. She didn't feel like she was getting positive feedback from the cast. Marceau corrects her, says, actually, I did get some positive feedback from, like, Reese, from Mel and Martel. I think it's interesting because Marceau always corrects her rather than just backs her. But anyway, he said that they did get some some support. You know, Tisha admitting that she was basically over it by the time they had their talk, their town hall me- meeting, which we know, we could tell by her attitude that she was definitely over it because she was not taking any constructive feedback at that time. Carlos is, of course, being messy mayor that he is. You know, he's asking uh, Courtney and Stormy if they consider Marceau and Tisha to be on the same level as them in terms of power couple. Why did you have to phrase it in that way? It sounded very messy. I'm like, why have you got to be comparing them like that? But anyway, um, Courtney took the high road by just saying, yeah, well, I don't know. You know, <laughs> he's just probably thinking, I don't want to get into all this nonsense. Tisha pipes up to say, actually, you know, you don't want to ask him that because, you know, Stormy will get upset, basically, because she gets upset about everything. And I was like, oh, shots fired. fired. And uh, then Tisha and Sto- Stormy start going at it. Uh, you know, you've got Tisha talking about Stormy needs to go and pay some invoices and pay people because she's getting calls about Stormy own, um, owing money. And this is what the streets of Huntsville are saying. And in my back of my mind, I'm thinking, this is interesting, Tisha, because when people come to you telling you about the streets telling you about your hubby, you don't want to hear nothing and you don't believe it. But somehow you believe these rumours about Stormy because, you know, it's convenient, maybe. Anyway, I digress. I will say, while they were going back and forth on each other, I, I was surprised. I felt like Tisha was definitely came out swinging this time round because I feel like usually in reunion, she ain't really packing no punches. But this time she came like, OK, I see I'm coming to, you know, kick back up people. I ain't taking no one's crap anymore. Um, so I'm like, OK, Tisha, is this a new Tisha? I hope you have the same energy for your man. We know you don't usually. But anywho, I digress. So them two are going back and forth. But what cracked me up was Courtney, because he's basically looking at Marcel, saying to him, well, that's how you do it. You know, you just just be quiet, <laughs> basically, and don't be going back and forth with, and talking. You know, uh, then Marcel is saying back to him, well, you, that, well, you do it. And, you know, I don't know anything about this anyway, kind of thing. So I was like, look at these hubbies, the, the husbands subtly shading each other. That cracked me up because like, uh, Courtney is just letting it be known. Like, I must stay out of this business. Can you see me? I am the person sitting here being quiet, letting the women argue out rather than getting involved. Marcel, take notes, essentially. So that had me cracking up, right? Now, Stormy definitely um, was not here for Tisha's comment about, you know, her not paying invoices and things like that. So she's hitting back saying, you know, that's kind of a low blow and that they're all black entrepreneurs. You know, she feels, you know, she blew up overnight. So obviously she's had to adjust to run her businesses. 
and then decides to brag on how much money she makes a month and talking about yeah telling Tisha that Tisha bitch you want to be her and all this kind of stuff I was like oh lord here we go but to me I just thought that was a, a crazy argument to talk about you know how much money she makes because I feel like they're all papered up on the stage like they all make money on the stage um so yeah I was a bit like mm. Tisha basically hits back and says well they're all millionaires on the stage and um then you've got the husbands trying to calm them down at the same time so you've got Marceau trying to calm her down when you know Tisha's popping off I saw Courtney try and calm down Stormy at one point but she kept popping off anyway and talking about was Tisha pr- practicing her rebuttals in the car and that, that had me crack up. I thought, yeah, because Tisha doesn't really come with all these rebuttals. So I was like, mm, she might have been practicing in the car for true. Then you've got Tisha saying, basically hitting back at her, at Stormy telling her that she needs to go and pop some pills and shut up. And I was like, whoa, where is Tisha's energy coming from? Also, why are you accusing the woman of popping pills? I was like, mm, this is a bit of a low blow for real. You know, I ain't seen this Tisha, but, and even Marcel was telling her, you're going too far. Um, so I was like, mm, this is interesting. But like I said, Marcel, obviously, I feel like he could have told her that off screen. I think he should just, they should, they should work out a little way so that he can be supporting her more. But we know Marcel is a, is Marcel. We'll get into that. Anyway, then Carlos then brings up this whole website issue. We know this whole website issue and her, you know, nicking the information from her website and putting on hers. And, you know, Stormy didn't even answer the question because she could tell she was definitely still heated. So she basically just tells Tisha, you know what, I gave you grace. And you basically tell her that she came with an agenda to say what she said about her popping pills. You know, Tisha then says that really, you know, she did speak to the web designer and they use it all the time. The web designer corrected it. Carlos is then saying, well, you know, he agrees that Tisha, it wasn't her error. I'm like, Carlos, be quiet. This is where you're being a bit messy because actually it is her error. Because, you know, he's saying the designer should have put up a statement, on, you know, to make it clear. I'm like, Carlos, do you understand what you're actually saying? Because actually, you know, he's saying that he feels it's not fair that she got backlash. But I'm like, no, shut up, Carlos, because... This isn't, this is, you're wrong, hun. You're wrong. Like, I like Carlos, but no, please, just, just, just stick a pin. Because it was her error. She didn't proofread it. You have final sign off as the owner of the business. Now, you can't just blame it on the creative because the creative would have been told to just copy paste and do whatever. Someone has to proofread that. And that should have been someone higher up. And the buck away stops with the owner. So I just feel like mm, he was a bit t shirt biased. That's what I felt like at that point. Um, and then when Stormy was trying to, you know, come back and say, we're really. You know, if anything goes wrong in the business, you know, you have to take the blame, essentially. And I felt like he kind of cut and kind of moved on from that because I feel like she was about to say, well, actually, you know, shipping the policies is not down to the designer's fault, which I completely agree. But I felt like he was a bit biased there. It looked like he just, I'm on Tisha's side is what it sounded like. You know, Tisha shouldn't have got the backlash. And this designer should have, you know, put up a statement on his, like, Instagram page or something like that. But I'm like, "Mm." if it's a graphic designer, they don't do the writing. That would be a copywriter. So you've got the wrong person. So, yeah, just stay out of that and stay in the the production lane. I just didn't really like that bit anyway. And like I said, I felt like he was a bit more biased on that. I felt like he could have let um, Stormy finish her point, but he didn't. Now, moving on to Kimmy and Reese, um, I think it was interesting, you know, Reese obviously trying to get on the front foot now because obviously he's been blasted across social media. We've seen how he appeared in the show. We saw, you know, what he had to say in the interview with Carlos. So he's doing his damage control. You know, I know how PR works and saying basically, you know, he was ignorant in the situation and he apologises and he's a different person now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anyway, you know, Carlos basically lets him know that people were thinking that, you know, the way he sounded, it sounded like he was basically forcing himself on her, like, like he was abusing her. So... You know, good that Kimmy obviously clears that up, but she did say that, you know, sex has always been her priority and it's not just about him, it was also about her. But I'm like, yeah, I get what you're saying, Kimmy, but sometimes let the man sit in his shit and take the the heat that he needs to take because you might also have a high libido, libido, that's fine, yeah? But the way the man was hounding you down was not right. And the fact that medication that you were taking was affecting your libido, libido and he weren't accepting that he just gaslighting you and making fun of you, was well, not okay. So I was just like, mm, Kimmy, you're always coming to defence. Now, I do like Kimmy, but, you know, she has been irritating me this season here and there. I will say that, but I still do like her. Right? Now, the orgasm, the fake orgasm made me laugh because obviously he's, you can see Maurice's pride is hurt about that, you know, and she just says, we're really, you know, a lot of women do fake orgasms. That's nothing new. It's just that she feels like she shouldn't have told him because obviously now he's upset about it. Um, and I thought that was interesting because, of course, that was a good segue for Carlos to then take it to Mel and, you know, talk about, well, women, a lot of women say that they fake their 
orgasms in their marriage. Mel, you made that comment on the show about never orgasming with uh, Martel. Of course, Martel is over there screaming out, eh, that's cap, that's cap. Um, the bed was always wet. And how he, you know, he has a, a hook and he is this and that and that. I'm just like, Lord have mercy. His ego is definitely bruised, right? Definitely bruised. Telling her that she's a liar, you know, his hook and curve must mean that he, that she's a liar and how the bed's always wet, whatever, whatever, whatever. Now, that could crack me up because I was like, you can't tell a woman what she's feeling. You really can't tell a woman what she's feeling. Um, now, Mel, of course, doubled down and she was saying, yep, she was faking it. You know, it is what it is. He's talking about, well, all the women that he smashes, you know, they ain't faking it. I'm like, sir, you wouldn't even know. OK, women are very skillful at doing that. Um, I'm not saying that I do that because I don't. In the case, I ain't going to do that. I'm not going to necessarily fake it. And I don't want women that do do it. But you would be surprised because even on social media, people are talking about, oh, how could she be faking it? She's had these many kids with him, blah, blah, blah. Having kids doesn't mean that you're, you're having an orgasm. Let's be clear. OK, sperm, eggs. That's just how the process works. Doesn't include orgasming. OK, because I know I've had friends that have been in very long relationships. And then I'm talking about, you know, over a decade. And then, you know, one of my friends in particular, she moved on and she was telling me she couldn't believe that, you know, it, sex could be this good. I was like, wow, what the hell is going on in your old relationship? Because sometimes you're, they're in love with they, who they are with and they think, you know, that's OK. They're going to put up with what they're going to put up with. So you would be surprised how many women that do do that. And then, of course, Carlos being extremely messy, asking Mel, you know, well, what was it about his sex? Basically, that didn't please her, like, you know, trying to get a bit more into the business. So she spoke about, you know, have, needing to have that emotional connection as women, which I kind of get, which is what I've been saying in all my other videos about Kimmy and Maurice, saying that maybe she's turned off because of his attitude, because whereas men can just, you know, stand up and go about their business, women are a little bit more emotionally connected. So I'm glad that she actually made that point. He then takes it upon himself, of course, to go and ask the women across, you know, the um, reunion if they've faked it or not. And, you know, Tisha eventually admits that she did fake it. Um, which I thought was interesting that she did admit it because just before that, Marcel was saying, you know, if you have been faking it, just don't say it, basically. But yeah, she said it after being pressed by um, Carlos. And when he asked Stormy, Stormy was like, nope, you know, she's fine. Courtney is pleasing her and she ain't got no problems there. So I was like, well, good for you, girl. OK, because that's the answer that everyone should be given most of the time. Right. Ideally, because what are we doing here? Anyway, when they went on their little break now, I thought it was interesting because, you know, you can see Tisha is still heated and she's definitely on smoke for Stormy. Stormy is not happy about it either. She's saying basically, you know, what the hell is going on essentially. And she feels like, you know, Tisha couldn't do what she's done or achieve what she's achieved. And that the only reason why they are actually where they are is because of the show. So I was like, oh, shots fired. Tisha in her room with her hubby, hubby you know, she's basically saying she ain't keeping quiet no more, where he's trying to convince her to not respond and telling her, you know, how to kind of operate. And I was like, good, Tisha, just push back on him. You know, if that's how you feel, that's how you feel, and you've got to defend what you need to defend. He just wants you to be quiet and then so he can be sassy and respond when he feels like it. But I'm like, no, you have a mouth, use it. So good. In other rooms, we had, of course, Martel still seething about the fact that Mel said that, you know, she didn't get any orgasms. You know, Maurice pops in to see Martel. Martel is going off about the fact that, you know, she's lying, she's lying, she's lying, you know, she's definitely had orgasms with me, she's lying, she's lying. Um, Mel's in her room telling, you know, her hairstyle is, well, nobody can tell me about my body and blah, blah. But it made me laugh because I felt like Martel, you know, he, he loves Kimmy because I feel like Kimmy does come to defence of the guys quite a lot. So he was saying to Maurice, well, you know, Kimmy keeps you 100%, but, you know, Mel, she's a liar, basically. When Carlos does return, he returns with a ladies only <laughs> it's supposed to be ladies only um panel but of course the biggest bitch <laughs> Marso was there it cracked me up when Carlos said the biggest bitch the ladies plus the biggest bitch I was rolling <laughs> I'm still rolling at that I was just like uh, even Marso can't say nothing because he claimed that he put that shit out there in the first place Marceau, you know, when he's talking to Marceau about being messy and being all in all the women's business, essentially, like, because he's always got beef with some women, hasn't he, really? You know, you've got Kimmy defending, saying, well, I don't think it's just women. I think he's in everybody's business. I'm just like, Kimmy, look, you don't have to defend all the men all the time. It's fine. It's fine. Just give it rest sometimes. But anyway, he's acting like people are asking for his opinion. No, no, asking for your opinion. Not at all. You just insert yourself in stuff because you need to. And that's what you want to do. So, of course, Carlos asks his story about calling him a bitch. You know, um, she's still shading him. 
Now, I thought it was interesting here because at this point, I feel like um, Stormy really did did kind of read Marcel quite correctly and telling him about himself um, being a, a bitch because of the fact that he acts sassy and that he doesn't have integrity in terms of, you know, just going about his business and doing what he's got to do, you know, um, he's not got integrity because he wants to have camera time and he wants to be on, you know, screen. I was like, ooh, shot's fired. But actually, you know what? That shot was actually what deserved because we all know that Marcel definitely does way too much, does way too much. Lots of gaslighting, lots of rudeness. I mean, he still came back with this whole, you know, that's just Stormy's culture. So you can see from Carlos's face, he was like, mm, yeah, shade, essentially. And I didn't know you had a different culture from being African-American. I'm like, I like that, you know, Stormy didn't really address the culture situation. She just addressed why she called him a bitch and what her definition of bitch meant. <laughs> I was just like, OK, honey. Carlos also asked his teacher about, you know, allowing other people, particularly Stormy, to call him a bitch. And she's like, well, you know, she's got no control. She doesn't like the fact that, you know, he should go on national TV and call a black man a bitch. And she wonders what's going on in her household with Courtney, if that's how she speaks to him. And if Courtney needs help, he should blink twice. I said, oh, <laughs> not Tisha coming with the shade. And then, of course, Stormy hit right back, back and said, uh, well, that's how we've been feeling about you. Mm-hmm. I said, oop, OK. Marso basically made it clear that she doesn't really, he doesn't really value Stormy's uh, opinions enough, you know, to care about what she has to say and, uh, and tries to say that she's insecure, you know, when it comes to the spotlight, essentially saying that she wants any type of attention, you know, even if it's negative um, because she's not used to being in the spotlight. So, of course, Stormy hits back at that and says that, you know, essentially don't play with me. I've been out here. People know who I am. You know, people know who she is and she's been out there doing her business for a while. So she didn't like that. And she let it be known that she feels like those two, as in Maso and Tisha, are always trying to downplay her achievements. Um, and he admits that he does try to downplay it. Then we've got Maso versus Mel, you know, because of the shade, the shade that he threw about her T-shirts and talking about, you know, not taking it seriously. So, of course, Mel... You know, with her shady self, bought him a T-shirt that says, I only sell T-shirts, um, a very big oversized one, and gives that to him. Um, of course, Car Carlos is saying, well, Mel, do you feel like he's always trying to dim diminish your business? And she said she felt like it was more comical. He was trying to, but she took it as more comical because, you know, Mel was able to handle him. Now, of course, Carlos brings up the comments that Mel made about, you know, Marceau not wanting to see Tisha thrive. And, you know, I felt like Tisha kind of downplayed that part and was just like, you know, because, I, you know, I've got names on his business, basically is what she was saying. But I felt like Mel was quite right, because if you go back to the early, like, first seasons, the man didn't want to let her out the house. He didn't want her to be independent. Didn't, he didn't want her to do anything. So, you know, that's true. And I felt like when Mel turned to Kimmy to say, you know, am I lying, Kimmy? You know, um, she had to ask her twice. I'm like, Kimmy, just open your mouth and say. So she did eventually, you know, agree. But it seemed like she was reluctant to go against him, essentially. I'm just like, mm, I don't know about all that. Anyway, Carlos also asks uh, Marceau, you know, is he scared of Tisha becoming successful outside of, you know, their businesses around Sculpt? So he's talking about, yeah, well, you know, they have their own big goals that they set a long time ago and... You know, essentially anything very enough of that is not what he necessarily wants to hear. It sounded very inflexible from what I could hear. Um, whereas she said that she's going to do what she wants to do. But I thought, mm, do you? But uh, if you do, that's a good thing. But I don't feel like you do. Carlos also brings up the whole thing about Tisha wanting to be a stay-at-home mum. Tisha then says that, yes, yeah, she was wanting to be a stay-at-home mum at one point and she was at one point but her family kept telling her you know you've done all this work you know you've graduated basically you know don't rely on a man and be independent then of course messy sassy Marceau pops up pipes up to say oh well you know this is a bunch of single women single strong women um that we call them the rogers you know basically throwing shade at Mel okay so Mel hit back and I loved it because Mel was just like look you need to uncross your legs you're more sassy than me I'm like exactly this man is unbelievably sassy what the hell is wrong with him he's really living up to his name the biggest bitch like that's his nickname I feel like he's living up to that right what made me laugh though is that whilst you've got Mel and Marceau kind of having this little back and forth banter you know hitting back at each other you've got Tisha who's trying to explain herself I'm just like you guys are so strange like I feel like Marcel, your wife is making a point. Why not let her finish her point? Instead, you're throwing shade at Mel. Like, you've got this little thing for Mel. I always say it, I don't care. I feel like he's got something for Mel because it's like, why are you having this little, you know, I want to throw rocks at Mel when my wife is talking? What's going on? 
Um, but anyway, Mel wasn't having the comments about, you know, essentially uh, implying that it's because you're booked and busy that you can't be a good mum. So she hit back and was just like, well, you know, she's been able to be there for her children and she still stays booked and busy. So don't try and play in her face. Next up, we've got Kiki and Tisha. Well, we didn't really get much of that because it was towards the ending. So we're going to have to pick up on that. But Kiki basically, you know, I thought it was interesting the line of questioning because you've got Carlos saying, why did you feel the need to go and tell Mel this? Which also sounds like you are now defending Tisha. So I feel like Carlos sometimes, maybe because he is so close to the whole franchise, that he doesn't realise that he's given up a little bit of, you know, biases in his questioning. Because I was like, yeah, the, the way you asked that question was a bit messy. Um... But anyway, he asks about the, the rumours that she, you know, that happened. Kiki explains that Tisha approached her off camera about the rumours because she, she knew one of the people that were involved in the said rumour. Um, name kept getting bleeped out. I was like, you just bring this person or something, man. We need to know what the hell's going on. Um, but this is the rumour about the threesome that I covered before. So I go back in the videos if you haven't seen that. Um, but anyway, she was saying she didn't know if it was true or not, but this is the rumours that she had. Um, you've got Tisha saying that, well, when she did contact the person to find out more information, she didn't sound like a concerned cousin. Kiki gets vexed and talking about, you know, she's basically dumb and she's a dummy and, and whatever. So them two are going back and forth. And she said that she's in denial and says that everyone can see that she's in denial and that her husband is basically a cheater. Tisha then in response to that blast that, you know, Kiki apparently cheated on her husband and that her husband has also cheated on her plenty of times and how she apparently paid for him to go out on a date. So we will get more of that information on part two, no doubt, because that one definitely threw me through a loop a bit. I was like, uh, what the hell is going on here? Part two is looking interesting because I'm very much here for Mel Altin Martel and his business arrangement with Sheree. <laughs> I was like, mm -hmm, this is going to be interesting because why is a man storming off on the stage? He's storming off and walking off stage. So we shall see what's going to happen there. But... You know, I thought it wasn't. A, it was a decent reunion. We'll see Wagwan. I feel like everyone kind of, you know, defended themselves. There was lots of like shade being thrown left and right. But I feel like people were popping off and were defending themselves. We'll also see. I'm sure. Um, I forgot about them. To be honest, the Whitlows they'll be on as well. And um, I'm sure at some point we will also see if the Fletchers maybe on the last last one because obviously they've only been in the last kind of few. Um, episodes so we shall see but what did you guys think of the of the reunion what do you think of the outfits what do you think about the uh, beef between stormy and tisha i already said in previous videos that i felt like those two bonded over mel and then quickly realized that they don't have much in common and now it's gone from friends to frenemies and not even frenemies more like enemies um so yeah i don't know that's an interesting one but i know stormy is definitely pissed with her and basically is basically saying gloves are off now and it like she was giving her grace now she's going to give her hell and I'm thinking, well, Stormy, you've really been given given, given some attitudes. So this is going to be interesting what your hell looks like because this is going to be crazy. But I'm here for it. I'm here for the mess. But anyway, what did you guys think? Let me know your thoughts below. Yes, so thanks for watching that. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share and hit that notification bell so you know when I am uploading some more of people's business. So until then, my nosy people, stay blessed.